In our last tutorial, we examined the DC circuit and proved that the uh, maximum power transfer theorem does indeed apply. What I'd like to do next is show what happens when your uh, voltage stimulus is actually uh, an AC quantity and hence it varies sinusoidally with time. I then will take it a step further and increase the frequency of the sinusoidal stimulus to a point where uh, the wavelength uh, which corresponds to uh, to such frequency is actually comparable with the dimensions of the circuits and with the dimensions of the components and the length of the wires that are used to connect them. Let's create a new schematic and call it AC power transfer and in this schematic we'll be setting up a very similar circuit as we did before. Uh, just press Ctrl L as usual, fetch a couple of resistors, I'm going to go quite quick through this because obviously we've done it all before. Uh, set them to 50 ohms. Insert uh, ground reference. And then we'll press Ctrl L and fetch a, an AC voltage source, place it on the schematic and then we connect everything together. We change the magnitude of the voltage source to 2 volts as we did before. This makes calculations easier. So how do we change the frequency of our, of our AC voltage source? Well, this is done uh, from Project Options. Double click on Project Options and then from the Frequency tab you can change the frequency of your voltage source. I am just going to use a single frequency for now and I'm going to use quite a low frequency, so I'll change the data entry units to kilohertz. Select a single point at 10 kilohertz. Click on apply and OK. So this means that our AC voltage source will only run at one frequency of 10 kilohertz. Before we go any further, I'd like to show the voltage and current time waveforms across the load resistor. Power in uh, AC circuits is calculated differently from AC circuit, and um, I'd like to revise that concept uh, first of all. What we can use to, uh, to measure the time waveforms uh, in a circuit are probes, which can be found uh, on, in the top bar of their measurement probes. So let's click on that and place one right on this node. The probes always have to be placed um, on a node. Now we go to graphs, new graph, rectangular graph, and we'll call it voltage and current AC. We right click on the graph, click on add new measurement. This time what we want is voltage and we want a time waveform, so time domain voltage. The measurement component is the probe. The data source name is the schematic, which is AC power transfer. And uh, we've only got one frequency which we're going to, uh, to use for our, um, for our graph. Then uh, we want to see the current as well. So uh, again, under the nonlinear measurements, uh, there's current. And again, we want the time waveform, so we select I time. And the measurement component can be exactly the same. Um, the probes can actually be used to measure both voltage and current. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you are using just one probe to measure both. Click on Apply and OK. And now we simulate. To visualize current and voltage a bit better, we can use different vertical axes for each of them. Uh, we've done this in other tutorials. We can just go into properties and then uh, um, under, me under the measurements tab, assign an axis uh, to, to each measurement. So we can select um, the left axis for the voltage measurement and click apply. And then we can select the right axis for the current measurement and click apply. Then we can also change the scales of the axis so that we can distinguish the two because at the moment, as you can see, they're overlapping. So the x-axis remains the same, that's our time axis. And uh, on the, the left axis, you can take the auto limits out. 
and uh, say you make it minus 1.5 to 1.5 click apply and for example uh, we can uh, change the current um, range as well and we may choose to do minus 25 to 25 and click apply okay and now we can see voltage and current quite clearly now the voltage of course refers to the axis on the left hand side and the current refers to the axis on the right hand side obviously voltage and current are in phase because we're looking at an AC circuit which is purely resistive in our case so when uh, voltage and current are actually um, in phase um, in an AC circuit and we want to measure the average power things are uh, quite simplified this slide shows uh, the current and voltage waveforms uh, VM and IM represent the amplitude, the maximum amplitude of each waveform. This is not the peak to peak amplitude, it's the peak amplitude. And the formula here show how to calculate the VRMS and IRMS, so the voltage, the RMS value of the voltage and the RMS value of the current. The average power then uh, in an AC circuit will be calculated as the product of VRMS and IRMS. In our case, this turns out to be uh, 1 volt times 20 milliamps divided by a half uh, which turns out to be 10 milliwatts so let's go back to our schematic and insert a power meter in the circuit as we did before so let's move these away take away the wire control L get a power meter insert the ground reference and we're in business we can go to graphs now right click create a new graph call it AC power transfer right click add a new measurement go back to power total power as we did before the data source is AC power transfer the measurement component this time is the power meter and uh, in terms of frequency we just have one frequency which we'll use for our x-axis click on apply ok and then simulate now you can see that the power is 10 milliwatts exactly as we were expecting and as we calculated so what if now we go back to our schematic and we insert a transmission line in this circuit First of all, let's remind ourselves of what a transmission line actually is. In its most basic form, a transmission line is something like this. It's just a coaxial cable. So you've got an inner conductor, which is what carries your signal, and then you've got an outer conductor, which is just connected to ground. So they're insulated uh, by a, a dielectric between them, and then there is some, uh, some external uh, jacket which you've got to uh, to protect the cable. So a transmission line at low frequency or a DCT is nothing but a wire which is surrounded by some metal connected to ground but that doesn't affect it at all because there is an insulator anyway in between them. So really at low frequency and DC uh, this uh, transmission line should have absolutely no effect on the circuit whatsoever. So let's verify that and see if that is the case. Let's go back to our schematic and now I'm just going to move this power meter and make some space for a transmission line. We go to the elements tab, go on transmission lines, click on physical and then just select transmission line in physical form. We could have done the same thing with control L. I just wanted to show you where the transmission line elements are under the elements tab. So we just place it on the schematic. As you can see, uh, the transmission line has got a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. This is not an impedance that the transmission line will have a DC. Uh, as we've seen, the transmission line is nothing but uh, two conductors, an inner and outer conductor, which are not connected to each other. And so really, uh, at low frequency, that will be just um, zero impedance or very low impedance. Um, we also specify the length of the transmission line 
and um, the other elements we will not bother with uh, at this very moment. Just uh, think of this as the uh, as the uh, cable that we've just shown, um, and we are able to specify the length and the um, the actual AC impedance of the cable. I do recommend that you read the introduction to transmission lines on my website, which will explain things in, in more detail. So we've inserted a transmission line in here, and we want to uh, make it long enough. I would say around 150 millimeters, so about 15 centimeters. And now let's see what effect this has on our power transfer. So let's go back to the project tab, look at the power transfer, and simulate. As you can see, it's had absolutely no effect at all. In fact, what would, what would happen if I made the impedance of my transmission line tunable? So I'll just go, the tune t go to the Tune tool, click on Z-Note. Let's go back to our graph. Open our Tune tool. And then start tuning the value of the impedance from uh, 0, for instance, to uh, 200 ohms. You can see that the impedance of the transmission line has got absolutely no effect. And that is because at DC or low frequency, the transmission line is nothing but a conductor, just a wire. And that's how it behaves. The problem arises when you go to much higher frequencies and then the transmission line impedance becomes important and has a significant effect, effect on the circuit as we'll see shortly. So let's go back to our circuit again and uh, put our impedance back to 50 ohms. Let us now create um, a range of frequency over which we can sweep our AC source and let's see what effect the transmission line has when the frequency is increased. So we can go to project options and this time we're going to choose megahertz as units because um, we want to try and push the frequency further. It won't be a single point anymore, we'll do a, a whole range. We'll start at 1 megahertz, we stop at uh, 500 megahertz and as a step we'll choose 10 which should be more than enough. Click on apply and then OK. And now let's re-simulate. Okay, let's have a look at the AC power transfer graph. Now, this may look a bit messy, but in reality, if you look at the scale on the left-hand side, the uh, DC power, the actual AC power transfer has stayed the same as, as it was at low frequency, 10 milliwatts value. But what would happen if we changed the impedance of the transmission line? As you can see from the fact that the color of uh, Zen Note is blue, uh, we've made it tunable. So why not uh, take a look at the graph and then open the tuner this time and uh, change the value of the impedance of the transmission line and see how that affects the uh, power transfer to the load. So if now I diminish the impedance of the transmission line down to 25 ohms, look at what's happened. As you increase the frequency, you're getting less and less power transferred to the load. And similarly, you increase it, take it back to a flat curve, but as you increase it again to say 100 ohms, a similar phenomenon occurs. The problem here is that just uh, as you did for DC circuits or low frequency AC circuits, you must have uh, an identical impedance for both uh, your source and your load to have maximum power transfer. Whereas in a DC circuit, this was just a wire it didn't really matter. Um, in an AC circuit, when you take the frequency up, then you can't just have a wire connecting your uh, source resistance and your load resistance. You will have a, a transmission line, and a transmission line that has to be of the right impedance, of the right AC impedance. If you don't have the right impedance, this will mean that you won't be able to uh, transfer all the available power to your load and hence uh, your circuit will not um, work as efficiently as you would like it to.